up, what's up? It's Kit, time for another video. Today, we are going to rig a 400 gram Sea Falcon Cutlass Jig. Okay, so uh, if you're new to the channel, this channel talks about the hows and whys of fishing. We cover everything from big game, ultralight, everything in the middle, including fly fishing. And today, I will rig one of my jigs. This is one of my own, so some of the components that I'm going to be using here could be something that you won't find um, in your area. Okay? But, uh, well, I have them, so I'm not going to frame them and put them up on my wall and use them. Okay, so uh, the hook that we're going with today is the SJ41 from owner. This is rated for 172 pounds. Okay, that is this and it's an 11-0. Okay, so you can see that it is just, see? Which means that if we put it here, even if it's uh, crossing at around half, it has a big gap. Now, if you haven't seen me rig one of these yet, you will find a video of me rigging one of these, but a smaller model. And this time we're doing a 400, and if you see, this is very close to a juvenile cutlass. Okay, so just, uh, there you go, just as a, a reference. All right, so actually longer than my arm there. So that's basically my arm and half my palm closed. That's how long this thing is, so about 15 inches or so. Okay. Now when you rig a cutlass, the hooks are not meant to be here. Okay, you rig them like this. A lot of people would probably disagree. However, the cutlass is an asymmetrical jig. So you have a thin back, a thick belly. Okay, and the, if you look at the side right there, okay, you'll see that it goes like from flat, it goes up like that, like that, like that, like that, okay? So if you drop this, it doesn't drop like that immediately, okay? actually kind of goes like this when you drop it okay so uh it's much favorable to have your hooks there because it is a very good position to hook when the when the jig is actually in this position otherwise if it's here you'll experience some tangles actually all right because the jig would want to move like that okay whereas if you put it on top when the jig wants to move the hook will just follow all right we have our thread which is fishing braid this is black pe.4 okay we will be using PFZ05 from owner, 240. We're going to be splicing it. And I'll show you how easy this is to splice. We're splicing this and... Guys, I beg you, okay? There are videos out there telling you to... Uh, oh, if you are, uh, you know, if you're on a boat, this is what you do to uh, make the uh, assist hook. That's bullshit. All right. So you're basically telling me that you have all the space in the world to take uh, materials for, to make assist hooks with, but you already don't have spares made before a big fishing trip hardly uh, <laughs> a professional thing to do there especially if uh, you're a pro of some sort or if you call yourself a pro of some sort because that is seriously such an amateur move or a clueless move so first tip 
guys, seriously, don't do this on the boat, okay? Whatever you do on a boat that's good or you think is good, trust me, you could do it better on a desk like this when you're at home, when it's not moving. <laughs> all right? And when you have all the materials you need and then more. Even if you have all the materials you think you, you need, it's still better if you're doing it on dry land. Okay? Okay. Vice. Okay. So, actually, we could do this without a vice, but it's just much better with a vice. All right. So, for bigger hooks, I actually lower it so that the sway is also lessened. So, the lesser the... Uh, the height, the lesser the sway, even if it's a really solid connection, okay? Measurement, okay? Uh, whether you measure it like this, okay, let me drop you down a little bit. Okay, I wore black just so it contrasts. If you're measuring, it doesn't measure, it doesn't matter if you're measuring like this or like that, okay? Uh, it's the same just uh, gives you a better sense of the length now especially when you're tying a knot always make sure that you have at least a hook length to work with okay so as you can see I have the position plus the hook length okay and also remember that if you're doing this and you're especially when you're splicing uh, to give yourself a bit of an allowance what we're going to be doing is more than just splicing. We're also going to be stiffening this so that, um, well, it's stiff, all right? So majority of the time what happens is that if you just splice this, it already kind of uh, stiffens itself. However, when you're using stuff uh, like assist hooks and all this, these uh, Kevlar cords, what happens is that when it, they start to move, they start to really soften up. So what I like to do sometimes is to actually put something inside a core let's just say okay with this uh you don't have to use a cord uh a cord that has a core okay because honestly the the ones that that have a core are a bitch to uh, work with when you want to put in a core this is uh 17 pounds You could use 15, you could use 20, you could use 30, it depends. Uh, 17 is what I have right now. And uh, I'm going to use it. So, and we're going to use a needle, okay? So this needle is just an ordinary sewing needle. The only thing that's special about it is that it's huge, it's big. All you need to do is just clear out the uh, the entrance there, and there's nothing special. We're actually just pushing this through until it reaches the very end. Now, I would probably be able to show you the whole process from start to finish here, because this is relatively easy to work with. So you have the end, okay, like so. Now what we want to do is actually splice this. Okay, as you see, I have both ends right there. Okay, right there. Now this is the uh, more complicated procedure. So, and it's easier without the uh, stiffening cord or the stiffening core uh, fluorocarbon as we have here. If it's just straight without the core, trust me, it's very easy. 
it gets complicated if you put a core. Okay. Again, we pull. And I think we're, we're actually going to be doing this. Right here because normally when you do it right it's difficult so uh, yep this is it we are going to do it there we go there okay so we have the end and then all we have to do is just make sure that it's in stretch it out like so and you have that okay now all you have to do is cut the ends and you have something stiff and it's really stiffer than normal, okay? So, thing is here, you have to really stretch it out. The, the cord inside has to get stretched. As you can see here, it's uh, not stretched out as much and you need it to get really stretched. And you'll see that it actually gets thinner, okay? And it's stiffer. Now what you do is measure it against your jig. And I want this to be not any longer than that. Right there. Okay. And then I will proceed to doing a knot. Like so. Okay. That's it. Now, this is where we bind. Okay. First, do a few on the body until. doesn't move okay so when you pull it doesn't move that's it okay put a few wraps like so okay take your pulling tool pull that would keep this not in a solid position right there okay hopefully that won't move and or you've tightened it enough okay and then your mission now is to not go over by a lot okay like right there what you want is to cut this at a taper Okay, why? Because when you cut it at, at the taper, it will come out cleaner. As you can see there. It'll form a ramp. Like that, okay? Now you can proceed to finish this whole thing. If you have a few... Uh, Like uh, fluffy stuff there. Just get a lighter and uh, zap that. Okay. Uh, super glue helps. Some. Now for this, you want to start from the top. Just a little squeeze. And what happens, it'll, it'll coat. And then you can 
put your wraps. Don't glue this. Glue your wraps. Basically, what you want to do, or what you're doing here, is to wrap this right here so that it secures the tag end and every time this is pulled it tightens this knot we're gonna tighten that okay we're gonna tighten that a bit more and what we want is for this to be as tight as possible okay and then we will wrap secure that I'm gonna take this off, actually use a puller to cinch it down even more. As you can see, I'm not done with this yet, but I want to make this, this binding as clean and as secure as possible. So, here we go. Now it's your choice to cover that with a heat shrink tube or not. I don't because I want to show how clean my work is. That's one and two. Shrink wrap doesn't really offer a lot of protection, to tell you honestly. Okay. Now, I'm gonna let this uh, get uh, a dose of, a healthy dose of super glue. So it's gonna get covered. Super glue does not uh, add weight. That's why I like super glue. Doesn't add weight, doesn't add drag. And when it's plasticized, this whole thing is actually quite strong. Just have to protect the wraps because the wraps will really uh, kind of. Uh, when this is all solid, it means that your tag end is not moving and every time the fish pulls, the knot tightens up. Alright, so I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back to it later. Okay, so now we are just waiting for this to dry up, which I don't have the patience for. <laughs> so, we're going to zap it. Alrighty. Little bit of that, this side, and then a little bit of that, this side, and you can see that it's all white now because this is the after effect of that thing right there, the zappy zappy thing, okay, the accelerator. All right, so all we have to do is just uh, kind of rub that off. Ouch, I'm cutting myself. Be careful. Okay, so we have that. As you can see, not a sloppy job at all. So why would I want to hide that with a shrink tube? If I've done it right, like this, I don't need to cover it. Now, the uh, shrink wraps are there to actually hide mistakes. Trust me on this, okay? They don't really serve a lot of purpose to uh, protect that. Now, if you look at how thin that thing is, 
You're telling me that that's going to protect from the teeth? No, the glue actually protects from the teeth, not some really thin, uh, you know, uh, shrink tube. All right. Okay, so we have this whole thing rigged. We have the track split ring and it's an oval. And the jig is pretty much rigged like that, okay? Now, the uh, track split ring on this jig is actually kind of useless. Like I said, I have it, I'm gonna use it. It's of one of the best split rings that you could ever get. This split ring shines for really big GT and tuna. And this is a, okay, so that's a track TS, okay, as you can see there, T-SR number six. That's track split ring number six. That's the capacity. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to give you the data, the whole data of this whole series. And uh, you can see how strong this thing is. Okay, so these are no joke, but in this instance, actually kind of useless because this is non-load bearing. All it needs is uh, a split ring that would be able to take the weight and the pressure of the jig when it's moving. While you're fighting the fish, there's going to be a bit of drag, but there's actually no load on the jig itself because your line is going to be tied onto the solid ring and you're going to be fighting the fish directly like that. So that split ring does not carry load. Again, I have it, so I'm going to use it, okay? I'm not going to be uh, mounting it on a frame and then putting it on my wall. I have it, I'll use it, all right? Truth is, I actually kind of ran out of bigger split ring, so for now, I'm going to use that. All right, so this split ring, of course, is made by Studio Ocean Mark and uh, from the uh, Ota Garage. Okay, so I have two sizes. This is a number six, and I think I have a number five as well. Again, just to recap, you will have a thicker hook, a thicker wired hook for this because with fast jigging, you're actually using thicker line because it's not a finesse technique. So you could use a really thick, for this particular uh, jig, I'm going to be using my max 500 gram rod and I have PE8 on that thing. Okay, so as you could, as you could see, that thing is really something that you could pull, pull the dentures out of a uh, big fish on. 400 grams, not subtle at all. And um, I fish this in 300 meters and below. And when you want to get down there with a bit of current and all that, and the fish are active, there we go. I like using only one hook instead of having a tandem on this one. One here, that's fine, you could do that too. But I like using one hook on fast jigs because, especially when the fish are active, I want to be able to take out the hook um, fast and drop again because the fish are active, the fish are biting. Um, I don't need a finesse technique. I need efficiency. One hook holds the fish. I can fight it. I can fight with confidence. I can pull back because I have thick line. I have heavy equipment and, uh, you know, big hook. That's that, all right? So we have spliced this and uh, stiffened it so that the chances of this tangling are minimized. For this particular jig, we rigged it to be on top, but for most jigs, it's actually on the belly because 
this jig falls differently from other jigs, while other jigs actually go sideways and flat like that. Okay, this one actually goes like that and falls, flutters like that. And this also slides, okay? This slides but goes like that and flutters. And the hook is always going to be in position if it's on top, okay? And uh, I didn't know that at first, but later on, I studied this jig and found that, hey, that's the, that's the, uh, the position and found that if I rigged it like this, I get more strikes. Up to you, if you want to rig it conventionally, that works too, and we've proven that. However, for me, this has worked a lot. Okay, so if you have questions, go ahead and uh, drop it in the comment section. Thank you very much for joining me today. If uh, you haven't yet, click on that subscribe button if you want to learn, if you want to learn more, that is, and you haven't yet, click on that subscribe button. Click on the share if you want to uh, share with your friends and uh, learn together. And uh, if you've learned something, this video, click on the like button. All right, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Class is missed.